Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at OSPF router ID. We'll be discussing OSPF reference topology, router configuration mode for OSPF, router IDs, router ID order of preference, configuring a loopback interface as a router ID, explicitly configuring a router ID, and finally, modifying a router ID. This episode is part of my series on enterprise networking security and automation. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. This is the basic topology network we're going to be using to describe how OSPF works in this episode. We have three routers here. Those three routers are all interconnected by their gigabit interfaces. Each of those connections between the router is an individual network with a slash 30 subnet on them. So there's only two addresses there. Th these are point to point connections. Each router off of it has a loopback address that'll simulate an, another network on the far side of those routers. And off of R2, we have a loopback that will also simulate the internet connection. All of these interfaces, all these networks, except for that internet connection, that connection off of R2, are in one area, one operational area for our OSPF. OSPF version 2 is enabled by using the router OSPF and then the process ID command. This process ID right here, and so this is right here is our process ID. That can be a number anywhere between six or one to 65,535. That's one of our binary counting numbers. As we set up your systems, this number is locally specific to the router, meaning each router could have a different number, but that is usually considered bad practice. You want to have the same process ID on all of your devices. That helps you just maintain a nice continuity between all of your routers running OSPF. A router ID is a way to identify your router in this OSPF network you're setting up. The router ID is 32 bits long. Because it's 32 bits long, what we can do for us humans is represent that in dotted decimal notation, very similar to an IP version 4 address. A lot of people will say it is an IP version 4 address. Technically, the router ID and an IP v4 address are different. A router ID is just an identification number for that router. It could be anything that you want to assign to that value where that IP address needs to be very specific. It needs to match the network portion of the network we're on. That host portion needs to be unique in that network. That represents that um, version four IP address. So there are a technical difference there. Sometimes people use router ID and IP version 4 address interchangeably. Now to add a little bit more confusion for that, if you don't specify the router ID, it will use your IP version 4 address. But that is only if you don't specify a router ID. And the recommendation is, is you should always set a router ID. That way you as the administrator know which router, when it goes through that election process of the designated router and backup designated router, you know which one is going to be elected the designated router. This router ID is uniquely identifying each routing OSPF router on your network. There can only be one router ID in your OSPF area. It needs to be unique, so you can't have duplicates there. And all of OSPF packets that get sent across your network, they include that router ID of the originating router. So whoever sent that out, that originating router in your OSPF system, that is going to be represented in those OSPF packets. 
Every router has to have that router ID to participate in that OSPF domain. And it, it get that router ID by two ways. Either use the administrator can assign that, and that's typically the best way to do it. That way you know who has the highest router ID, who's going to win that election process. You're rigging that election. Otherwise, it's automatically assigned based upon IP addresses. The router ID is used by all these OSPF devices on your network to do two things. One is to synchronize those OSPF databases that will eventually build your routing table and your routes across your network. And the other thing is it it's used to participate in that election of your designated router and your backup designated router. There's a three-step process to determine what the router ID is on an OSPF enabled device. First thing is we look and say, is that router ID explicitly configured? Did you enter in that router ID line in your configuration modes and put, put in a router ID, put in a number? Yes, you did. Then that's going to be used as your router ID. If you didn't do that, it's going to look and say, for the second thing, is there a loopback address configured? If there's a loopback address configured, the router ID will be set to that IP address of that loopback address. If there is no loopback, then finally what's going to happen is it's going to default to using the highest active configured IP version 4 address. It's going to look and see what's the highest IP address, IP version 4 address, and it's going to use that as the router ID. If you're enjoying this episode on OSPF router ID and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. By doing this, help support the channel, which in turn lets me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. One of the ways to configure a router ID is to configure that loopback interface. To do that, you go into global configuration mode. Here we're actually in the interface configuration mode already. And then you just type in interface and then the loopback and the number of that loopback. It could be loopback zero, loopback one. Type that in, hit enter, and now you're configuring that loopback interface. What we use on the loopback interface to set the router ID is the IP address of that loopback interface. Go ahead and we set the IP address. Right here, we're setting it to 1.1.1.1. And then we're using 255, 255, 255, 255, that's a slash 32. That means we're going to match every bit of that. We, we are specifying a host for that. Now that does a couple things. Because we're using that 32-bit subnet mask, that effectively creates a host route. Not a network route, but a host route. And because that's a 32-bit host route, OSPF doesn't have to advertise it. And that's why we create this host route with a slash 32. Once we do that, this will now be our router ID. We set that there. If we come down here now and do a show IP protocols and include any line that or filter by doing an include router ID, it's going to show us that our router ID is now 1.1.1, which is this IP address we set up here previously. OSPF does not need to be enabled on an interface for that interface to be chosen as the router ID. We don't have OSPF enabled on this loopback interface, but yet it will show us, it will use that loopback address as our router ID. The best way to set your router ID best practices is to explicitly configure that router ID. 
you go into your router OSPF configurations, right? Go ahead and type in router OSPF and then your process ID. Then once you're configuring your OSPF, you can use the command router ID, and then you put the string of 32 bits of ones and zeros in there, but you change it into dotted decimal notation. Here, we're gonna set it as 1.1.1.1. Go in there and we explicitly set that. Regardless of what your highest IP addresses are on your interfaces, regardless if you have loopback addresses or not, this is going to be your IP address. So you as the administrator, you control this. Once we go ahead and set that, we can do a show IP protocols and then filter on any line that includes router ID and it'll show us this is our router ID. And in our example, and a lot of times what people do in industry is try to make it so it's sort of easily remember or identifiable what your router ID is. For our example here, we're gonna set router one to a router ID of 1.1.1.1. We're going to set router 2 to 2.2.2.2. And if you had to guess what we're going to set router 3 to for a router ID, it's going to be 3.3.3.3. We're just trying to keep it a little bit simpler here. So that way, when you look at the device, you can know what that router ID is right away. To modify a router ID. We have to go in there. We have to change that line in that router OSPF configuration area. Here in this example, when we do our first show IP protocols to show us the router ID, this our current router ID is 10.10.1.1. That is our current one. And we want to change that to 1.1.1. You typed in something wrong or you had a change in your network. Maybe it's a newer device. For some reason, you want to change it. What we have to do is that we have to go into where we explicitly set that uh, router ID. That's in our router OSPF and then your process ID. We're doing 10. And then just go ahead and type router ID and then what you want the new router ID to be. You don't have to do a no and remove it and retype it in. You can just retype it in and it overwrites it. After you enter that new router ID in, notice the message we get here. It's from OSPF. It says reload or use clear IP OSPF process command for this to take effect. Just because you've changed it, it hasn't applied it, it hasn't updated in the RAM, in the routing, it hasn't forced that re-election to happen. What you have to do is either do the reload or the clear IP OSPF process. Two ways to do that. Reload is a little bit of a brute force where you go through and reboot it. The preferred method is this clear IP OSPF processes. That's the method you should use. That's what we're gonna use right here in our example. Go ahead and type in clear IP OSPF. It's going to say, are you sure you want to reset all of our processes? You have to type a Y or a yes in here. And you can see we are getting some information about it and basically what it does is it takes the interfaces down and it take and it, then it brings them back up because of those interfaces going up and down the ospf process starts over and it goes through learning all the information and goes through the election again once it's done we can now and how do we know it's done it says we are in the full state once we're done, we can go ahead and do a show IP protocols with anything with router ID. And right here is our new router ID we set. We have to go through and reload or clear those settings to apply them. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on OSPF router ID. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my contacts and social information are on my website, evtechify.com. You can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form.
In the upper right is my playlist for my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.